Gracias. It's cold. What's up and welcome back to this week's vlog. So this vlog is a little bit sporadic, so bear with us. First of all, Nate is not here this week. I'm alone, so in the next video you'll probably see me alone and maybe him wherever he's at in San Marcos, which is somewhere north of us right now. So he will be back at some point <laughs> on Friday and until then, it's just me. So this video is mostly just um, some clips of what we've done in the last week, mostly what Nate has done in the last week, because he's been preparing for this trip. First of all, he wanted to say hello from San Marcos. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm out here in San Marcos, just spent the night, and uh, excited for a couple more nights out here. But I want to take a moment to tell you about this awesome new fashion accessory that I stumbled upon here. Uh, this thing, it's like a, it's like a pack for around your waist. Um, super convenient, I can keep my keys, my wallet, um, anything that I need in there. And uh, I don't know how come these things hadn't been used before, but uh, this one's from 96. I love it. I'm a huge fan, and y'all gotta get yourselves one. So in terms of last week, Nate was really preparing for this trip to San Marcos, so this is kind of what he has to say about that. You should tell him about teams and why why this trip was significant. You it's close. not focusing on me. You look cross-eyed. <laughs> do I? Will you just hold it for me? No, I'll do it. No, I'll do it. No, I want to do it. They caught me. Talking. No, I want to do it. Are we fighting in front of our friends? We make it so awkward. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, should we start here? Are you talking to the our? our, our, our I'm talking to you. Our subs. <laughs> <laughs> All 44 of them. This has been a less than normal week. And I have a feeling most of our weeks from here on out until the fall are gonna be less than normal. So that'll be kind of fun. It'll be, it'll be interesting. It'll keep us on our toes. Okay, so um, Nate's holding the camera because, well, I wanted to give you some backstory to Nate's backstory. <laughs> Every summer, well, and throughout the year, but mostly in the summer, teams come down to the island. And we used to call these partnership development trips, but they're not that anymore. They're just missions trips. But the reason they were called partnership development trips is because the reason that we have people come down here is so that we can create partnerships that will result in mutual transformation. So our partnerships are to get people in the States partnering with people in the Dominican Republic. And why are these partnerships important, Nathan? So glad you asked. So these, these partnerships are great. In the United States, we've been blessed with a lot of resources. And what we want to do is help use those here to try to equip and empower the local leaders. And the way that we can equip them is through giving them tools, uh, teaching them through our seminary program or through teaching English or through a kingdom business, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. vocational training, etc. <laughs> and the way that we can empower them is through developing these international partnerships in which we have people supporting them prayerfully and financially and just getting behind the work that they're doing. Partnership trips are essential to the ministry. Uh, they're essential to what we do because that's how we are able to encourage the local leaders in the work that they're doing in their communities. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have said it better myself. You don't even understand how cameras work. Do you? Mm -hmm. Do you actually? Mm -hmm. Okay, Nathan. So tell us your story. Okay, so I want to tell you guys about my trip before my trip to San Marcos. Allow me very quickly to interrupt. So, Nate is going to tell you a very long story about his short trip to San Marcos and Yes, it's very long, but it's a really good story because it gives you a little bit of insight into what we're doing here and what he's doing this week with his team. So like I said, it's just me this week. He's gone. So right now, as I'm speaking to you, Nathan is not here. But on Friday, Valentine's Day, he went to go take a preview trip, if you will, an exploratory trip of the space where he's going to be with his team this week. So he's there now. But this trip that he went on was 
really cool and it gave him a lot of insight and he just wanted to share that with you guys. So that's what he's going to share here. So Tim and I and his sister and his brother-in-law went on Friday to go to San Marcos and the intention of this trip was so that I could get my feet wet and experiencing uh, what this coming week with the team from Rochester, New York is gonna look like. Uh, I thought that this would make for a great story, so I decided to share it with you. And so we set out early on Friday morning, Valentine's Day, traveled for about an hour and a half, and finally arrived in San Marcos, and uh, got to experience what this week's gonna be like there. So the church doesn't have a dorm facility, um, so the girls are gonna be sleeping in the church um, mattresses, and the guys are gonna be sleeping up on the roof in tents. I'm out here in San Marcos, just spent the night, and I'm really excited about this. I'm nervous about it a little bit. Have you ever slept in tents with a team before? I have never, I've never slept in a tent with a team. Are you nervous? Um, I'm nervous about it a little bit. I'm nervous about the rain. I'm okay. not really worried about the wind. But this year the temperature is perfect. It's about 68 when you wake up, and it gets up to about 85. And that's about perfect. The facilitator that I'm facilitating with, uh, her name's Diane. She's been up there a bunch of times. Tim's been up there a bunch of times. So I really feel like this week is gonna be a great learning opportunity for me. I'm really going to help translate and to help support Diane and this team in the work that they're doing. After we went to San Marcos, we went to check out another community. And this was kind of the main purpose of this trip because this community is called Maimon and we have never been there. Tim's never been there and he's been on the island for like 20 years. Um, Diane's never been there. I've never been there. But first, Obviously. we got hungry. <laughs> so we went to this fish place. And let me tell you about this fish place. So we walk in and the place is big. And it took us a while to find because we kind of got lost along the way. <laughs> but long story short, we walk in uh, we saw people that we knew, the, the construction group who was that day taking up the stove and the gas and the mattresses for a team to stay at. So they, they had stopped there, which means that this is probably a pretty good local place. Wasn't it like pretty gross though? No, it wasn't gross. It looked really gross. Well, th this is why she says it looked gross. We go and we sit down in this wide open space uh, with maybe like 50 tables. And Tim goes and talks to whoever's down in the kitchen and comes back and he says, all right, time for you guys to come with me. And you're like, where are we going? Where are we going? Sorry, our recording quit. So you should pick up where you left off. So Tim comes back to the table and he says, all right, you guys, come with me. And we're walking down and I'm like, I have no clue where we're going. I thought maybe he knew somebody there and he wanted to introduce us to somebody. But he takes us into the room, and it's the kitchen. You look around and there are like 20 just vats of cooking, boiling oil. And there's this guy by this giant, like, kind of looks like a big freezer, but it's like a refrigerator. And Tim says, he points to us, he goes, it's time for you to pick up your fish. And I was like, what? So that's what we did. We were looking at the fish and we picked out three red snappers which were caught either that day or the day before and they fried them up and they brought us some tostones and it was delicious. It was kind of an interesting experience because they still had the heads on them and the eyeballs in them. But I gotta say, it was definitely some of the best fish I've ever had. So we're going to my mom, which is a new community that we only have one contact with, and we're trying to find this place uh, because we've never been there. And all we've been told is that it's behind Amber Cove. So if you've been to the Dominican Republic on a cruise, you may have been to Amber Cove. It's the port for cruise ships in Port de Plata. Um, you may also have been to Punta Cana, I'm not sure. Uh, let us know if you've been to the Dominican Republic or if you'd like to. But all we've been, all, all the information that we've been given is that it's behind Amber Cove. When we eventually found the community, because we were able to get in contact with the lady there, it was kind of like behind Amber Cove, like Indianapolis is north of Franklin. It's not just, you can't just like drive and, you know, be in Greenwood and be like, well, I'm north of Franklin. 
<laughs> I guess this is really only gonna pertain to the people who know the area that we're from. But <laughs> anyway, so it wasn't, I mean, we spent a lot of time driving around trying to find this place because we were just right behind the Amber and it was like four miles away. So we finally get to this place and we greet this girl there. Uh, her name's Juliana and um, she may be like 30 and her mom's there. And what they do is they sit at the side of this main road and they sell clothes and coconut water. And so we get there and we're talking with her and she goes in and she gets us these, she says she's gonna get us some coconut water. And she brings out literal coconuts. Like I thought she was gonna bring out like canned coconut water. And it, it, was, it was so cold, she just starts hacking at the coconut with this machete to get it open. And then just hands me a straw, puts it in my hand and says, here, this one's for you. <laughs> Fresh coconut water. It's delicious and cold. Very nice. How is it? It's very healthy. It's good. I can feel my health increasing. I feel so healthy right now. I could run to Santiago. So this is a different one than that one. This one will be the same. See how the thick same? it is? Mm -hmm. But that one's different? Because it's different. Oh, because she's got a big one with... They, does the coconut meat taste different? This one's sweeter. Mm. That'll be slimy. I mean, this is slimy oh, too, but sweet. I'm not even that big of a fan of coconut, but this was so fresh and so cold, which I think was the, the reason why it was so good. So we start talking with her, and we realize that the way that she has a connection with the ministry is through a guy named Pablo. So a little bit more about Go. Right now we're in about 70 communities and um, nine of those communities that we're in are actually prisons that we have talked with the wardens and they have allowed us to go in there and to minister to the inmates and we've run a bunch of Bible studies and hundreds of people have been baptized through the ministry and so it's really incredible. And I mean, even the, the staff of the prison has said that they want to know more about what we're doing in there because they've just seen such massive growth. And uh, one of the people who helps front that is a guy named Pablo. And the way that Pablo knows this lady is because he serves in a prison in Puerto Plata. So every you know week he's driving an hour and a half to go minister in this prison. And on his way to and from, he stops at this lady's place to get coconut water. I ran into Pablo and I was just talking to him today and I was just so impressed with his intentionality to get to know this person that he runs into regularly. He, with a little bit of intentionality and time, he was able to minister to a girl, get to know her, and now she's plugged in taking classes at our seminary and now we're, we're helping work through her to help serve needs in her community in this team that we're with. So one of the reasons I want to share this story is because of uh, something that's been in my heart lately, and that is this model that we have for living missionally. Hey, Doby. Oh, <laughs> that was so good. I love her. This model for missional living, that's connect, serve, share. So. Pablo did a great job of connecting with this lady just through intentionally going and getting coconut milk from her every time. And then, now that we have a connection with her, how can we get to know her needs and, and serve her and minister to her and where she's at? So now she's actually plugged into our seminary. That's the sound you hear, she's eating food. Now that she's plugged into our seminary, so now Juliana's actually plugged into our seminary and we are getting in, into her community this week to help serve her and uh, her community through painting houses, which is a great way to help restore dignity and to demonstrate the love of Christ. And then share. So now that we have some rapport, you know, how can we 
demonstrate the reasoning behind why we're doing these things. So I think that was just really impressed on my heart because Pablo did a great job connecting with this lady and then being intentional and, and trying to serve her and hopefully that grows deeper opportunities for, for ministry. While we were there, Tim said, hey. That would be... Oh, be a lady. Hey. So while we were there, Tim actually asked her, hey, is there a place where maybe we could do a medical clinic? Um, and that's a great way in which we can provide some tools and some help, some resources, uh, by taking our, our medical staff and going to these communities and really help support the local leaders because the local leaders go in there saying, hey, I wanna serve, I wanna serve you people. But when they bring a whole medical staff to do medical clinics and hand out these medications free of charge, then that's a real demonstration of um, the service that they're wanting to do. Gosh, I look hideous. So I think the real reason that this was placed on my heart is because I've been thinking, how many different places do I go each day? You know, and how can I be more intentional like Pablo in ministering and connecting with the people there and thinking missionally, how can I help serve the people where I'm at? Because now a whole new community um, is going to be reached with the gospel uh, because of Pablo's intentionality in purchasing coconut water from the same place. It was a really cool way to spend my Valentine's Day because it was unconventional, but I got to see a, a new aspect of the ministry and got to see a brand new relationship form. And I'm excited to be working alongside Juliana and her mom in that community this week to develop the relationship more and more. When we left, I ended up Buying a pair of tennis shoes for Abby because I know she likes Chuck Taylors and I thought that they were red but they ended up being orange and so that was a disappointment. I don't know how I didn't tell that they were, I don't know how I couldn't tell that they weren't orange when I bought them but I got home and to my surprise they were very orange and not red. So I guess I'm crazy or going crazy. And when I got home we decided to have a wonderful Valentine's Day. We uh, ordered Papa John's, yes I know, it's the Dominican Republic. But we ordered Papa John's and we watched Fight Club and we just enjoyed spending some time chilling out here in our home. That's how my Valentine's Day went. And it's Sunday now and tomorrow I'm leaving and going to the community. So I gotta get packing my bags. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hey wait, no, don't end the video. I'm not going to. Okay, but I need to tell them my thoughts about Fight Club. So I told you we got Papa John's and we watched Fight Club. Abby, what are your thoughts on Fight Club? Okay, here's how I felt. You are not allowed to talk about it. Don't you know that? Cool? <laughs> yeah, that's actually something that really ticks me off. So we're watching this movie. And I'm getting progressively more and more angry. Why? Because it's a stupid movie. I don't feel like it's stupid now because I finished it. It ended up being okay. But until the last 10 minutes of the movie, I thought it was a stupid movie. Yeah. It was like halfway through. No, it wasn't. I remember you, your jaw dropping and you just being like. Yeah, that was like with 15 minutes left. I don't think so. Okay. For anyone who's seen the movie, when you find out that big secret. Hey. Blah, blah. I won't tell you what the secret is, but don't tell me that when blah, you find blah, out what, blah, blah. Okay. Don't tell me that when you find out what the big secret is, it's not there are 15 minutes left of the movie. Okay, here's why I think Fight Club is stupid. Because it's really insane. No one will tell you what it's about. I've asked my whole life. I said, someone, please tell me, what is Fight Club about? And everyone who who I've ever asked has always said, first rule of Fight Club is you can't talk about Fight Club. That's true. <laughs> but why can't you just tell me, here, here's, here's what the movie's about. It's about two guys who meet on a plane, one of them makes soap, one of them does- A dead end job. What's this Something in a desk. Yeah. I don't know. And they meet, and one guy's apartment blows up and the other one lets him live with him and then they start beating each other up for fun and a bunch of other guys join them. But there's a twist. That's all anyone would have had to say to me. To get me to be like, oh okay, now I kind of feel like I could watch Fight Club. But no, I never had any interest in watching Fight Club because all anyone ever said was- Don't talk about the Fight Club. Yeah, so that's why I think it's stupid. 
Should we? Hey, just... but I but Valentine's Day was still good because it was with you. Oh, thanks, babe. And I made brownies, and those were really good. Oh, they were really good. Oh my gosh! You I should tell them. I should share the recipe with you. What recipe? What's special about these brownies? Well, you can't. It's a secret ingredient. Oh, watch next week's video. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that story that Nate had to share. We wanted to share a couple other things with you guys that we did this week because we decided this should maybe just be like a week in the life vlog with a very long <laughs> center. So um, once Nate met up with the team, Hugh spent a lot of time with them, but I joined them on Sunday? I think Sunday after church, maybe, or Mon what's today? Maybe it was yesterday. No, 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 it was definitely Sunday. So Sunday I joined them and after church we went out to the LDC, which you guys have only seen teeny tiny snippets of unless you've been here. We went out there with the team and then afterwards we took them to the oldest tree, I'm not sure if it's on the island, but definitely the oldest tree in Santiago and it's gigantic, so I'll insert those clips here. Get ready for a big tree. No, not you. You just said something. You distracted me from my video. That's the big tree. Here, Abby, hold it. Okay. Look at how big this tree is. <laughs> okay. Are you coming down? Nope, going up actually. On a Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> hey, come here. Come here. Come over here. Tell me about the tree. It's massive. Tell me about why we're here. It's called the Siba, and uh, it's uh, estimated to be about a thousand years old. Over a thousand years old, actually. May 5th, here is um, Arbor Day. What's that called? In English, Tree Day? Arbor Day. Tree Day. That space is just so beautiful. I love it there so much. I've always been a tree person, but this tree is like a thousand years old. It's such a literal vision of beauty and of God's goodness and power. <laughs> it's so huge. The day after, or maybe the day before, we almost took another kitten home, which would not have been the greatest decision, only because he was a boy and we don't have boy cats in this house. That was our week. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this vlog. I know that it was kind of a long one and it was kind of all over the place, but our weeks are about to be all over the place. So thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for watching this vlog. If you did like it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does support our channel. Leave a comment down below letting us know what your favorite part of the vlog was or what you want to see in the future. Please, we want to know what you guys want to see from us because that's the kind of content that we want to put on this channel. Not just for us, but for you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never ever miss a video with us ever again. I think that's all I have for you guys right now. I will see you next week, either Sunday or Wednesday. And until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.